This is Wordplay, show 143, VTR 62287, air 72087, director, yes. When Robert Van Van carves a jack o lent is he getting ready for Halloween? If you gave Phyllis Diller a xytham, would she pluck it or strum it? When Maurice LaMarche hits the road, does he drive a turbid charged car? We'll find out the answer to these questions and a lot more as we play television's funniest new game show, Wordplay! And here's the star of Wordplay, that man of many words, Todd Kennedy! Here, yeah. here, yeah. hello there. Hi, gang. Welcome, welcome to Wordplay. Thank you very much, thank you. We're just having a heck of a lot of fun around here with these three crazy people. Maurice, LaMarche, Phyllis Diller, and Robert Mandan. Yes. Now, I want to talk to Maurice for a moment because I don't know. Have you done any other uh, television game shows or? No, uh, this, is, this is my first. Either, it is. Either as contestant or as celebrity. Well, yeah. you're, yeah, you're doing a good job. Well, thank you. Thank and you. I, I watch wanna... them a lot at home. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a real freak for, like, yeah. information and, and that's... Uh... Well, we all know you do a lot of voice work, and they're gonna be, you're going to be Popeye not only nationally but internationally in the... Uh... Yeah, I guess it's going to go all over the world. It's, 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 it's really a it's, a... it's big shoes to fill. Jack Mercer, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, was the original voice of Popeye for 55 uh -huh. years, and yeah. I'm only the second person to do the voice, so we're bringing back Popeye, and who that's... Who does that? You don't do the olive oil, too, do you? No, no, but, uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Phyllis? <laughs> I didn't mean to wake Not you up. Not off there. <laughs> short nap. Uh, it's all right. How's everything? Are you Just all right fine. today? Just fine. That's good. Yeah. I noticed that the blood drained out of your hair overnight. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's going to be. Well, I finally made it to the beauty parlor. Uh -huh. well, and they do... said, uh, we, uh, we do repairs, not reclamation. <laughs> <laughs> And Robert, you're in fine fettle. Yes, I, I am. Well, that's yeah, good. Now let's go over and meet these people. Because they're two new players. We, somebody ran off with a lot of money yesterday. And so that means that we have two new players. And one of them is Alice Redis. Tell us about yourself, Alice. I was an atomic hydrogen welder during World War II. Really? I've been a teacher, a district counselor, a mother, a grandmother. And I love to travel. That's good. Now, early Mueller. Well, Tom, I spent most of my life in entertainment banking. And I decided to take a short hiatus and do a home study on the secrets of rapid weight gain, which I successfully no discovered. <laughs> okay, welcome to both of you. Let's, how do we play? Oh, yeah, we use nine words playing this game. They're all to be found in Webster's Third New International Dictionary. And today's words are complacent, uh, zythum, turbid, supercilious, jackalant, uh, noology, <laughs> a dust gregarious, and hawks. And we'll be finding out the definitions of six of those words. And then whoever's ahead at the end of that will have a chance at our double definition round, which today is worth uh, $5,000. And one more thing, one of these words is a bonus word which can win for one of our players a trip to Bermuda. <laughs> Let's show our home audience today's bonus word. And having done that, we ask Alice for the first pick of the word. I'd like to try turbid. Uh, turbid, you've got it. Robert, tell her about it. Turbid means excessive punishment. Thank early, you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to let the weight of that sort of settle. Oh, yes, thank you. In the early 12th century, a Persian sultan, that was a Salim I, if you'll remember from your history books, had his personal doctor put to death simply because the doctor had advised the sultan to stop drinking coffee. And as he was led to the gallows, the doctor cried out, You see, you see, it makes you edgy. <laughs> Excessive oh, punishment. Right. So like Excessive coffee. punishment. All right, fellas, turbid? Okay, turbid means muddy. Now, when a young boy plays in the mud, it's childish. When a grown woman plays in the mud, it's rejuvenation. <laughs> when two grown women play in the mud, it's five bucks and a two-drink minimum at Bob's Fantasy Palace. <laughs> Money. There you go. Maurice. Well, turbid is riding gear. Now, I have a neighbor who plays a lot of polo, and he, this is true, he actually wears pantyhose under his riding pants, which uh, keeps him from getting chafed. This isn't so bad, except that he makes the horse wear a leather teddy. So, <laughs> Kerbin is riding gear. I see. There you go. 
in a weird neighborhood. Oh. <laughs> All right, Alice, the turban is the word. Does it mean excessive punishment? Does it mean muddy? Or does it mean riding gear? What do you think? Well, Phyllis has my favorite hairdo. I know she must be right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is uh, turbid muddy and muddy turbid? Is that right? It is yeah. right, Alice. You got it. And behind turbid, you see it is worth $25. And that goes on your scoreboard. And we now go over to early. Complacent, please. Complacent, upper left-hand corner. You've got it. Phyllis, tell her about it. Complacent means willing to please. I understand that some of the airlines have begun offering a complacent class. Now, in complacent, the service is so attentive that the stewardess actually introduces you to her. She introduces herself to you, you know what I mean, before she disappears. <laughs> oh, I see. Willing to please, that's willing. complacent. Maurice. All right. Complacent means inventive. Now, I gave my youngest brother Jason a chemistry set for his birthday. And now he spends hours in the basement inventing grotesque, unnatural creations. Why, just last week, he made bacon bits. <laughs> inventive. Inventive. <laughs> Obey. Complacent is an outer yard. This is usually found in prisons where the convicts go to smoke cigarettes, exercise, or laugh about the good old days on Wall Street. <laughs> yes. Out of yard. There you go. <laughs> All right, Early. Complacent is a word. What do you think here? Do you think it's out of yard? Or do you think complacent means willing to please? Or do you think complacent is inventive? Phyllis and willing to please, please. Ah, uh -huh. Phyllis, is that the right definition? W yes, it is. And you got it there, Early. And behind it is $75. And that goes in your scoreboard. $75 for Early and $25 for Alice. And that takes care of round one. We'll raise the dollar amounts and try our best to give away that trip to the Bermuda in round two. Right after this. Raise the dollar amounts up there. We got a trip to Bermuda and lots of fun's going on. We continue now with Alice. Which word would you like next, Alice? I would like supercilious. Oh, right at the top, huh? Supercilious. Interesting word, huh, Maurice? Yeah, you know, it, it, it is, Tom. It's a very interesting word, and it means arrogant. Like, for instance, the arrogant panhandler that Johnny Carson ran into the other day. Uh, he said, Mister, can you, uh, can you spare $7.50? For a cup of coffee, and uh, I said seven fifty for a cup of coffee. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> Panhandler said, "Just give me a yes or no. Don't tell me how to run my business." He's <laughs> 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 arrogant. Very good. <laughs> Very good, Maurice Bob. <laughs> supercilious means feeble, and uh, when I was in high school, I played on a really supercilious football team. Not only did we not make the playoffs, but our quarterback was voted Mr. Congeniality. That's oh, feeble. Yeah. It's a little limp on the passes there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> little limp on the passes, I see. Phyllis? Uh, supercilious means gaudy. Fang's clothing is supercilious. Just yesterday, I said to him, speak up, I can't hear you over your shirt. Gaudy. <laughs> Over your what? Shirt. Shirt. Oh, all right. Shirt. I see. Yeah, we couldn't hear it too well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Alice. Supercilious. Does it mean feeble? Does it mean gaudy? Or does it mean arrogant? I like Maurice's answer. You I do? think I'll go with him. You think it's arrogant, huh? Arrogant for supercilious. Is that right, Maurice? <laughs> yes, it is. Right. There you go. Alice, you get that word, and behind it, we see it is worth $150. Add that to your score for a total of $175. Over to you, Early. Gregarious, please. All right, gregarious. Unconnected, I note. And uh, Robert Mandan, how about this word, gregarious? Gregarious means professional in manner. A professional robber enters a bank, takes the money, and runs. An amateur takes the money and opens an account. <laughs> Not yes. Yes. <laughs> no. Professional and <laughs> Professional and <laughs> Phyllis? 
Gregarious means living in groups. Now, rabbit, rabbits are gregarious. As a matter of fact, they can multiply like crazy. It's their spelling that's keeping them out of the bed. <laughs> 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 they can't get into a decent college. Living in groups. Keeping them out of the better college. All right, Maurice. Well, gregarious means demonstrating strength, like at this carnival, our carnival, mm -hmm. where eight, eight strong men tore telephone books in half. Now, a lot of people wondered what became of those eight books. They turned up in 16 payphones across the city. <laughs> demonstrating strength. All right, early, here we go with gregarious, and it's one of these. Is it professional in manner? Is it uh, living in groups, or is it demonstrating strength? I think demonstrating strength with Maurice. You do. Demonstrating strength for gregarious. Is that right? <laughs> no, it isn't. So, Alice, what does gregarious mean? Does it mean professional in manner or living in groups? You know, I still like Phyllis's hairdo. <laughs> you do, living yes. in groups, yes. huh? Is that it? Living in groups, gregarious. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. And behind gregarious, you get $100 added to your score for a grand total of $275. Yes, indeed. $275 for Alice, $75 for Early. Game isn't over with yet, though. We got two more words coming up in round three, and you don't want to miss it right after this. I just said that uh, we're going into our third round, and the game is never over till we get to that final word, because once again, see, in the third round, we've raised the dollar amounts once again, and I have to tell you, the Bermuda trip is still up there. Now, there are only five words, Zytham, Jackalant, Noology, Adust, and Hawks. And so I hope one of these ladies wins that trip to uh, Bermuda. We'll soon find out, won't we, Alice? I guess so. All right, what <laughs> word would you like next? Noology. Noology. I don't hear any sound effects, so that's not the trip. And it is, however, connected to $100. So if you get this right, you'll get the money behind Noology as well as $100. Phyllis, Noology, please. Well, it's a strange thing. Noology is the study of holiday traditions. One of the most common holiday traditions is gift giving. Now, I knew a guy who used to steal from department stores to get presents for his friends. In fact, he wrote on his calendar, only 45 shoplifting days till Christmas. Yes, that's right. The study of holiday tradition. Ah. Noology, Maurice. Well, noology is the study of the mind, like psychiatry. Um, one hospital, in fact, was so short on doctors that psychiatrists had to fill in. And I went there once with a broken leg, and they shrink showed me my x-ray and he said, what does this mean to you? <laughs> he showed me my x-ray and uh -huh. it was a study of mine. I see, okay. <laughs> Robert? Uh, huh? Actually, noology is the study of workaholics. My grandfather was a workaholic. He single-handedly ran a huge company. But his wife, my grandmother, complained that he couldn't separate his family from business. So he finally solved his problem. He gave her two weeks' notice. There you go. See? Study of workaholic. Answer everything. Alice, noology. Interesting word. Uh, may I ask, have you heard of that word before today? No. Oh, ho, 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 as in noology. As in noology. Uh, all right. Let's find out what it means. Study of workaholics, uh, study of holiday traditions, or study of the mind. Which study? Well, I'll try holiday traditions. Study of holiday traditions, 24 shoplifting days till Christmas. Is that right for noology? It, oh, it isn't. Early, early. Does it mean uh, work, study of workaholics or of the mind? <laughs> Let's go you, you with workaholics. Huh? What's study that? of workaholics. Study of workaholics. Is that right for noology? <laughs> no. Well, I wonder what it could be. It must be study of the mind. I win. 
<laughs> you win, yeah. That results in a block up there on the board, and we go over to Early for the sixth and final word. Early, let me remind you of something. You have $75, Alice has $275. Which word would you like? Jackalant. Jackalant, connected to two dollar amounts up there. Today's bonus word was hawks. But jackalant is the word that we are uh, investigating at the moment. Maurice, tell her about it. Well, a jackalant is a puppet. Uh, like Lamb Chop, Sherry Lewis's puppet. <laughs> Although, let's face it, Lamb Chop is not really a puppet. Lamb Chop is a sock. Actually, you know, this is true. Sherry just headlined in Vegas, and they insisted that, they, that she spice up her act, so she went out and got a pair of fishnet stockings yeah. for her hand. <laughs> Unfortunately, she had to cancel at the last minute because her co-star got a run in her face. <laughs> oh, got a run in her face. <laughs> Jack and is a puppet. That's a goodie. <laughs> Robert? A jackalant is a tombstone. I recently visited Arlington National Cemetery and I came across a tombstone that read, here lies a politician and an honest man. And, and I thought, hey, imagine that, burying two people in one grave. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tombstone. Yeah. All right, Phyllis. Okay, a jackalant is a lookout. In a herd of zebras, there's always one lookout, a jackalant, who watches out for leopards. Now, it's not that zebras are frightened of leopards. They're just very fashion conscious, and they're so <laughs> afraid of clashing. <laughs> a lookout. Oh, <laughs> All right. Now, early, there is enough money in the connections up there to make you our winner. The word is jackalant. Jacqueline, and uh, one of these is the right definition. Is it a tombstone, or is it a lookout, or is it a puppet? Let's go with a lookout. All right. Phyllis. Uh, if you are right, you, well, we'll find out about the money amounts, won't we? So you say a lookout, huh? Is that right? I hope so. Oh. That is not right, and that means that you're in the lead, Alice. You're our champ, right there. Now, I tell you what. All right, audience. People in our live audience, this is your chance to play our game now. With applause alone, how many of you think jack-o'-lent means a tombstone? Yeah. All right. How many of you think jack-o'-lent is a puppet? Yeah. Oh. Is that right? It is right, and you're right. Very good. We have to say goodbye to Early Mueller, but we have nice gifts for her backstage, and we thank you for playing our thank game. You. Really. Thank you. Thank you, wonderful contestant coordinators, Don and Karen. They've been great. Yes, thank they you. are terrific. Thank you for thank saying you. that. Thank Alice, you. come on over here. Alice Redis, she's from San Diego, California. Watch your step there. We got a couple of steps to go there, Alice. Our ex-atomic hydrogen welder, I tell you, you've had a sparkling career. You were a teacher and traveler. You've done a lot of things, huh? Yes. Well, in a moment, you're going to have a chance at $5,000, and I think you can do it, too. Oh. We'll see how well you do right after this. Step on down there. You're going to do just fine, Alice. Ex-teachers and ex-teachers do very well. If you live in or plan to be in the Los Angeles area and would like to be a contestant on Wordplay, call 818-569-3664. Once again, Tom Kennedy. Thank you, Charlie O'Donnell. Alice, you all set to go here? Yes. All right, now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go from the left side of that board to the right side of the board by connecting boxes in 45 seconds or less. You ready to do it? Yes. Just put 45 seconds on the clock. And we'll start that clock with your first pick. 13. Mm -hmm. Not to go, telegram pause word. Stop. Mm -hmm. 14. A Q-tip cleaner, mop the deck. Swab. Yeah. 15. Brightest planet, Roman love goddess. Venus. Mm -hmm. 16. Very fundamental, a computer language. Basic. Mm -hmm. 17. Attend to church's leader. Deacon, C2, uh, 11. Uh, uh, 10, excuse me. Pass. pass. Uh -huh. 10. Ten. Ten. Foot covering 50s hop. Shoes. 11. Shoe. Foot covering 50s. Shoe. Sock. Sock. Yeah. Uh, 11. Okay. Army food hall disorderly condition. Mess. 
And... 12. You all got all the way up to number 12 and ran out of time. I think it was number 17 that done you in. We'll talk about that as soon as we come back. Number 17 was a killer. It was a killer. But that's all right. You did a good job. You did fine. Alice, we'll start with number 12. Now, that's the one where you didn't have time to solve it. Use with others in single stock unit. Single sh stock unit is a share. Share. Oh, yeah, now here's the one, though, share. that where you spent a lot of time, number 17, attend to, and church's leader. Minister. Not, yes, that's oh. it, minister, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, in the game, you got $275. In this round, $600 for a total of $875. Oh, and we want. Great. Of course it is. <laughs> and now, I'll tell you what's even greater. You can come back the next day. You want to come back tomorrow? I'd love to. And when you do that, you'll be coming for not five, but $7,500. <laughs> Alice and I are going to be here, and we're going to look for you. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> come on, kid. Let's go over here. And, uh... Today's runner-up on Word Play will receive Ferris Industries' classic bustle-back high-leg reclining chair with ball and claw legs has the styling to go in the finest room with comfort to match, furnished by Burris. And a supply of Flavor Aid. Makes you glad you're thirsty. Regular or pre-sweetened with 100% Nutrisweet. Assorted delicious flavors. One package makes two quarts. Flavor Aid. Plus new Glade 2. The long-lasting air freshener that brings outdoor freshness indoors. New Glade 2. And Bacos. Adds that delicious bacony crunch to all your salads. Bacos. And this quick. How quick can a batch of fluffy homemade biscuits make a picnic a meal to remember? This quick, this quick. For wordplay, this is Charlie O'Donnell speaking. If you like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more and check out my Facebook page for other exciting content.